name is Ariel and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm out on a little solo hike. It is like, I don't know, close to three in the afternoon. Definitely a late start, but <laughs> I finished work early and realized that there was still plenty of daylight and decided I wanted to get outside. I tried texting a couple friends, but kind of too short a notice to get out on an adventure. So just headed out all by myself. And this is something that I actually do all the time <laughs> because one, I don't really mind hiking alone. I get some of my best thinking done out here when I'm solo, but also I just would rather go alone than not go at all, especially on any of my activities where that is the possibility. So today's adventure, I think it's a little bit less than eight miles round trip to some beautiful lakes, super sunny and hot today, which is great. And um, I was thinking, on the way over here about some of the common questions that I get either here or over on Instagram. And a lot of them revolve around the fact that I do a lot of activities solo. I know that there's a lot of questions about is it safe or how you can do it safely. And I know that there are a lot of you out there that want to get into activities like hiking or biking and have been having trouble finding people to go with you. So at the end of today's vlog, I actually am gonna do a short Q and A section and just answer some of your most common questions so that you feel a little bit more prepared to get out and adventure on your own whenever that's the only option. <laughs> because like I said, it's always better to get outside alone than not at all. So obviously you can tell I'm winded. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get back to hiking, but I'm excited to take you guys along for the journey. been hiking for one hour and just checked my watch and looked at my stats done a little over two and a half miles and just shy of 1200 feet of vertical gain um, those numbers are not important in them in it of themselves but I do think it can be really helpful to have some of these stats if you are going to get into solo adventuring <laughs> the watch with all the stats is a new thing for me I did plenty of solo hikes without it. But since I started tracking my adventures, I've been able to get a much better idea of one, what hikes are within my ability and also like how much time it takes me to do certain things. So I can see like in a day like today where I really just have a couple hours in the afternoon, um, you know, what length of hike I could actually pull off before it gets dark. Today, luckily there are no like storm clouds or anything like that rolling in, but it's also really common in the mountains for late afternoon thunderstorms and things like that. So it is helpful to have a general understanding of how fast you hike. <laughs> and um, I think no matter what you determine, always give yourself enough of a buffer because sometimes you hike fast and sometimes you hike slow.
officially on my way back down. That was really hard to leave. <laughs> it's so nice up there right now. It's like kind of late in the afternoon and it feels like the middle of the day just because it's just so beautiful out. But I do need to make my way back towards the car. So reluctantly, I am headed back down. So nice. I am so glad I made time to do this today. Oh, happy gal. if my camera does the best job of like showing you how dark these clouds actually are but it is a really good reminder to always be prepared I don't think I'm actually gonna end up needing a rain jacket right now but I totally could hear thunder over there where it's the darkest and I do have a rain jacket in my pack um, you just never know <laughs> like there was no rain or anything in the forecast but there's been so many times that I've gone hiking especially in the mountains where it doesn't even call for any clouds and I end up in like a hailstorm. <laughs> so especially, especially when you're hiking solo, make sure that you are well prepared, but like kind of always, right? Even if you're with someone, make sure you got everything you need. That was so fun. You gotta love the days where you can squeeze in an almost eight mile hike just like after work and still be back in your car by 6 p.m. It's pretty awesome and it is totally made possible <laughs> by the fact that I hiked solo. So with that being said, let's jump into the Q&A. So when I got home from my hike, I posted in my Instagram stories one of those little question boxes to see what sort of questions you had about solo hiking. And there were kind of a lot. But there was a theme, so even though there were probably a couple hundred questions, um, there really were only like a few core questions. So I'm gonna make sure I cover those. Okay, so first, um, there were a lot of questions around safety, um, specifically around like safety and protection and things when it comes to animals and when it comes to people, um, like other people out there on the trail when you're out there solo. So I'm gonna start with animals. And this question really depends on where you're hiking and what sort of wildlife is out there because it's totally different depending on you know, like if you're in the desert, if you're in the mountains in Colorado, if you're in the mountains in Montana, um, there are, there's just different wildlife depending on what uh, region you're going to. And so you're gonna need to be just prepared and aware um, for different things. Like obviously if you're in the desert, there might be things like rattlesnakes that you're gonna wanna pay attention for and look for them on the trail and make sure you take like a wide arc around them and never get too close, you know, those sorts of things. Um, but that's we don't really have rattlesnakes or anything like that when I'm hiking in the mountains in Colorado so that's not necessarily something I'm as aware of when I'm on most of my solo hikes so I think that the first thing I would say if you're going to go out on a solo hike in your area or wherever you might be visiting is just to do a little bit of research about the wildlife um, in the area that you're going to be in so that you can be more prepared for example when my husband and I were hiking up in Montana, uh, Montana has grizzly bears and it's grizzly bears are not something that we have to worry about in Colorado, um, but in Montana it is. So it's really important to bring bear spray with you. Um, it's not something that you'll most likely ever have to use, but because grizzly bears 
are more um, aggressive and are known to potentially attack people, like you, you have to be prepared for those situations. So I would always hike with um, bear spray in those situations. But in Colorado, even though we have tons of bears, I don't hike with bear spray because we have a different type of bear. So the bears in Colorado in general are black bears. And even though they're called black bears, they can be any color. <laughs> um, same in a lot of the uh, California mountains. When I lived in Tahoe, I literally saw like cinnamon, like blonde cinnamon colored black bears. So just because they're called black bears, just know that they can be other colors. Um, but in general, unless you're coming between a mama and some cubs, black bears are way more scared of you than you are of them. And they will go bolting in the other direction as soon as they see you coming. It doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. It just means that it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have issues with them. So oftentimes when you're hiking with someone else, you're talking and you're making noises. And so that will alert the wildlife around you to... <laughs> like go the other direction before you even get to see them. But when you're solo, you may not be making those same noises. So um, there's a couple things you can do. I know people will put be like a bell on their backpack if they're gonna be hiking through, you know, bear wilderness area, um, just to alert the wildlife and the animals around them. I don't have a bell on my backpack, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I wouldn't call myself like necessarily a quiet solo hiker. Um, a lot of times I'll be like singing or laughing to myself. Um, you know, and in those moments where I am quiet, I'm just kind of being mindful and aware of what's around. Uh, so I, the, the main question was like, do I bring protection for animals? And I think the answer would be generally no. Um, it does depend. But I think that the biggest thing is really being aware of the wildlife that you're going to encounter in your area. And most of the time, if you just do a quick Google search, you can also find like, oh my gosh, like if you were to encounter like a mountain lion out in the wilderness, what you should do. So uh, instead of giving you <laughs> a rundown on all of them, because it's just going to be totally different depending on the wildlife in your area, that's what I would suggest. Um, but yeah, in general, personally, I do not bring like... Uh, any sort of protection against wildlife. I just focus on knowing what I may or may not encounter and being really aware. Okay, so the next question or like a lot of questions was around um, kind of fear around strangers on the trail, other people. And generally um, this question is coming in more from women. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions about what about if you see like if there's a sketchy guy out there on the trail and things like that. and. You know, I'm gonna be totally honest. I feel safer out on the trail, out in the wilderness than I would being alone, um, like in a major city or even in some of like the smaller cities. I just don't, I, I don't feel like it's something that I'm constantly worried about. That doesn't mean it's not a reality. I just feel like it's much less likely to happen out there. Um, I think that the main thing I would suggest is also just being aware. And I think that that's going to be one of the most important things, no matter what you're doing. Um, and also it, it could depend, like if, you know, depending on where your hiking trails are, if your hiking trails are near some major cities or it's near like the trailhead is a place where like people congregate that aren't really outdoorsy people. I mean, maybe there's going to be some other elements to be mindful of. Um, and I think you can just really decide for you where, what your what your comfort threshold is. Um, I don't generally bring like protection <laughs> out there for strangers or people either, but there are some really small, simple solutions that you could and um, that wouldn't like take up too much space in your backpack. You know, there are a lot of times where I have a little pocket knife right in my hip pack. Usually it's for cutting salami, but I guess it could be something that you could use for protection if you if you ever needed it. Um, and then also they make really small little pepper spray things that you could also put in your hip bag, uh, hip, the hip pocket, or just somewhere really quick and easy that you could access. So there are options and I, you know, I don't wanna, um, invalidate any of you who have fear around these things because I don't I don't know your experiences I don't know what you've been through and the thing is is though even though I would say that most of the time um I do feel really safe out there it doesn't mean that there that there isn't any possibility for those things and it's it's sad that this is a you know a question that we have to really explore um but this is the reality of the times that we live in so you know I feel like in most like mountain town area hikes um, I feel pretty safe out there. Um, 
but again there are options where you could have just a little something for peace of mind uh that's not going to like be super heavy or you know take up a ton of space so i just you know again be aware when you're out there be mindful of the people around you and be mindful of your own intuition you know like if you have a weird situation or you have a weird interaction and it leaves you you know leaves you with a gut feeling that something's not right i just wouldn't disregard those gut feelings so just because i'm sitting here being like generally it's safe out there i wouldn't worry too much um i don't want to like pull away from your own intuition because i do think that we can have a pretty good sense of people um if we're not letting our fear totally drive the train or you know be in the driver's seat so kind of a twofold threefold answer to that question um, but I do hope that helps just to hear all of that if that's something um, that is you know a fear of yours or a concern of yours when heading out on the trail so there were also a few of you who wanted to know what you would do in an emergency situation like if there isn't cell phone reception and things like that and again I kind of have a couple layers to this so it is helpful to have some sort of I don't wanna say like medical, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be on that level, but some sort of like first aid type knowledge and maybe having a small first aid kit in your backpack. I'll be completely transparent in my little day pack. Um, if I'm just going out for a little day hike, I generally don't really have much of a first aid kit, which is maybe something I should reconsider. But if I'm gonna go out on a really big day hike where I'm gonna be deep out in the wilderness, you know, like 24 miles something, then I will generally have, you know, a small first aid kit and, and know how to use it, know how to use the things in there. I did a great um, weekend course uh, last year called uh, Woofa Wilderness First Aid, and it just it gave me a lot of background information. You can take that to the next level and do your woofer, which is like I think generally a ten day course, although they have expedited ones. Um, but it also covers like you know how you would um, evacuate people and things like that. So it might that woofer might be more than you need. And then there are also just like super basic first aid classes that you can take in your community. Again, this is not a necessity, but the more skills that you have and the more knowledge that you have to be prepared for those situations, the less you're gonna be worried about that going in. And then the second piece is generally, I have uh, some sort of um, like SOS GPS type device on me. I've tried a couple different ones and they're all great. Um, so I just usually have that clip to my pack when I'm out solo or out with partners, just cause you never know what, what could happen. Um, like things, things do happen. So they do have, um, most of those devices you have to buy them and then you have to do some sort of subscription service, but they have really, really basic level subscri subscription services, um, where you could have like, you know, 10, in going and outgoing messages a month. And that way you can, you know, always have that SOS device with you. So if you're gonna do a lot of solo adventuring, I think it's really, um, it's a really smart idea to have something like that with you. Okay, so while I was filming the last couple of questions, my husband was sitting in the background doing some editing and he reminded me of a couple of really important things if you're going on a solo hike um, for safety reasons. And one of them is to, let other people know where you're going. Um, <laughs> this one is something that I i wasn't so good at in the past, but now that I'm you know, married and have such an amazing husband, I'm getting much better at, because it is, it is really helpful to have someone to know where you're going and when roughly you think that you're gonna get back. So now whenever I go out on a solo hike, you know, I'll tell, you know, it'll be kind of like an unreasonable time, but it's like, you know, if I'm doing an eight mile hike and I'm leaving at three and I'm not back by dark or I haven't texted him by dark, then he then he knows to start to worry and then he can, you know, do something. And I it's funny because I, you know, I say this isn't something that I've worried about in the past, but it isn't something to be overlooked because, you know, I I hate to say it, you know, I've unfortunately lost um, a friend to to the wilderness. And I don't I don't know if her having telling having told someone when they were going to be back would have saved her um, from what ended up happening but it would have sent someone out looking for her a lot sooner um and there are situations where if someone knew someone you know at home knew when the person was going to be be back and knew when to worry that it would have saved their life so i don't want to get like super dark and heavy, but I do think that he made a good point that it is really, really helpful um, and maybe even important to let people know where you're going when you're gonna be back 
um, and to have those check-in points. And it could just be a friend, it could be a parent, um, just anyone that would be able to you know, make a call and look out for you if something were to happen. Okay, so there were also a lot of questions about like planning and choosing hikes that you're gonna go on solo. Like if I only go solo on hikes that I've done before, or if there's any like specific types of hikes that I wouldn't do by myself. Um, and so I would say if you're just getting into hiking solo, like you've never done it before, uh, I do think it would probably be wise to stick to trails that you've hiked before with other people. That is definitely how I started. So when I when I first started hiking solo, it was only on trails that I'd hiked probably a couple times before with other friends. Um, and it was only because, I mean, ultimately, I only started hiking solo because I wanted to go hiking, but I couldn't find anyone to go with me. Um, but to feel comfortable and safe, I did choose trails that I knew, or at least would like recognize where I am and have a general idea and not get lost. Um, that being said, <laughs> as I built up my comfort and I built up my confidence um, and I built up my skills, I do feel comfortable heading out on trails that I've never been on before um, solo, but I tend to uh, really do some extra planning. So I'll like make sure that I, you know, really read the descriptions of the hikes well, if I can find photos of like key landmarks, those sorts of things. Like I'll really do my due diligence, my research. Um, luckily in this day and age, you know, a lot of trails are pretty well defined, but I have found that there are a lot of areas where there's trails that kind of intermingle and switch and mix together. <laughs> and it can be really easy to get, to think you're on one trail and end up being on another one. Um, so another thing that you can do in those situations is have some sort of tracking app of some kind. Um, you can use like, you know, like the, the GPS watches. Um, you can use like, there's apps on your phone. There's a, I'm pretty sure it's free, an app called Gaia. Um, and there are, so there are ways that you can have an idea of where you're, where you are. So you can notice or acknowledge if you are in fact off route. Um, so I think with almost all, all the questions so far, it really just depends on you, your comfort level and your like abilities out there in nature. And just know, like I said, the more that you do something, the more that like, the more that you hike solo, the more confident you will feel with it. And you know, sometimes that can be an issue because sometimes when we're overly confident, we overlook things. Um, but I will say that as I built up my confidence, I started, you know, intentionally and like cautiously, you know, stepping onto trails that I maybe hadn't explored before. So I hope that answers your question. I know I feel like with all these, there's kind of like a lot of layers because we're all coming in with different backgrounds. And so, you know, I think with almost anything, it's just, you know, part of the answer is gonna be, it depends. So there were a lot of questions about what I bring with me on solo hikes, if it's different than what I bring with me when I'm hiking with someone else. And it's it's not really generally that different. It's just that if there's any like essential items that we would need as a pair, that I would just need to have all of those myself, if that makes sense. And I always make sure that I have a little bit more than enough, just in case. So like a little bit more than enough water, <laughs> or uh, if we're somewhere where there's gonna be water that I can filter, um, having my filtering device with me so that I can refill my bag, um, having a little bit more than enough food, just in case. Um, you know, it's so funny, cause sometimes I'll go out on solo hikes and I'll come back and I will have touched almost nothing in my backpack. <laughs> but, um, you know, just having those extra precautions, um, having, you know, the right clothes that you'll need for the elements, even if it doesn't necessarily look like it's gonna change, uh, especially you're gonna be out there for, you know, quite a long time. The only time that I'm not like bringing all this extra stuff is if I'm doing it, you know, as a trail run. Um, but then I'm, I'm generally moving quickly and I won't be out there as long. Um, I'm not a huge trail runner. I did a bit of it last year, um, for fun, but I generally speaking, if I'm out there alone, I'm like briskly walking and I might have some like light 
yogging on the way down. Um, but I would say, especially if you're just getting into solo hiking, um, bring bring more than enough. Bring everything that you need plus a little bit more, just so that you feel safe and secure out there. And if something you know happens or if you end up taking a little longer than expected, it's not a big deal at all. Um, I actually find that generally when I hike alone, it's faster than if I hike with someone else because I'm not like worried, you know, I'm not holding a conversation. Um, and so I might be like walk a little bit faster to a point where I'm a little bit more like puffed with my breath, but that's just me. You, you might not experience the same thing. Um, so to answer your question, bring what you would need, bring the food, bring the clothing, you know, bring especially water, 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 water. So important. Um, and yeah. So there were also a few questions about like loneliness and boredom out there on the trail. And you know, if it doesn't bring you joy, you don't have to do it. <laughs> um, I really like being out there. I like being in the like open space. I don't mind being alone with my thoughts. Um, in fact, a lot of times I find that I do some of my best like thinking and processing like if I'm going through something personally I sometimes really 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 like going like on a long solo hike because it just helps me filter through all of it and generally you start in one place and then by the time you get to the top you've like got to a totally other place with your thoughts and then by the time you're at the bottom you're just like in almost like a complete resolved situation so I really enjoy that um but if you don't, there are so many other activities and you don't have to solo hike if it's not gonna bring you joy. Um, I think that it's gonna be a matter of just discerning, you know, uh, how do I put this? Like just discerning if it's that you, you don't want to be with the things that you're processing and you're kind of like avoiding. You know, I feel like in the world that we live in, we're so distracted and the world is so noisy um, that it can be really, really challenging to not have all of that noise um, and can be almost like anxiety producing and stressful. Um, but I do find that it can be really nourishing and helpful to move into that space, if that makes sense. Um, but also if, if you're like, you're, if, you're boy, if you're bored and you don't enjoy it, then just know that there are so many other options um, and you may end up liking it more as you do it more. <laughs> But it's totally okay. I mean, I think that there's like, I, I think that I want to end this Q&A by saying is like, just because something is right for one person doesn't mean it's right for the other person. And if it, something doesn't bring you joy, then, you know, keep searching and find the things that do. I started solo hiking because I love hiking and I couldn't always find people to go with me. And then it ended up being something that really nourishes me like on a deep soul level. And I find a lot of just satisfaction in doing. Um, but if I went out solo hiking and I hated it, then I probably would find other things to do solo. So, um, <laughs> I feel like there are so many things left unsaid in this Q&A. Um, so I hope that I didn't miss anything. I do hope that if you're thinking about solo hiking, there were, you know, you got, got some answers to your questions. But also, um, if there's anything I missed or if there's anything you're still wondering, just write it down in the comments below and I'll make sure I take some time um, to answer some questions and make sure you feel like you have a full picture because there is that added layer, you know, when you're going out and hiking solo. So if any of you are gonna go out and do this yourself, I just wanna make sure you feel fully prepared and you are fully prepared um, to just have the best and most safe experience possible. So thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you have any other questions, put them down in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to be along for all the rest of the adventures, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next week.